Before we can introduce trigonometry, we have to discuss and review angles. Angles are going to be the star of trigonometry. So we're going to be using them the entire time we discuss trigonometry. So it's really important to understand what angles are and how we measure them. So let's do a little bit of review. In geometry, we have what is called a ray. A ray extends indefinitely in one direction. A line extends indefinitely in two, but a ray is only one, and then it has an end point on the other side. Now, if you put two rays together, when they share a point, this is called the vertex. And when you put two rays together that have the same vertex, it creates an angle. So I'm going to use two different colors here. So I'm going to actually call this the here the initial ray. And I'm going to call this the terminal ray. So when you create an angle, you go from the initial to the terminal, start to finish. So in this case right here, there are two main angles that we can draw. The first one would be this angle that goes from the initial to the terminal in that direction. And then the other one would be the angle that goes from the initial to the terminal in this direction. And in about two seconds, we'll explain what's the difference between the pink and the green. So in this class, we're going to be using what is called standard position angles. And the standard position angles is placed in the rectangular coordinate system. The rectangular coordinate system is the system with the x-axis and the y-axis. It is also called the Cartesian coordinate system. Um, and so a standard position angle has two things that must be true about it. The first thing that has to be true about it is that the vertex has to be at zero, zero. And the second thing is that the initial ray is on the positive x-axis. So as you can see, there's a little diagram of standard position angle. Now the terminal side is going to end anywhere, depending on how large or small the angle is. Okay, so the terminal ray can be anywhere in the rectangular coordinate system, but the initial ray has to be on the positive x-axis. So that's the start, and the vertex has to be at zero, zero. Again, as a quick reminder about the rectangular coordinate system, this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. We're going to also be using quadrants a lot in this class, so very important to review that. So in this case, the, t the angle is in quadrant two because the terminal ray ends in quadrant two. So let's go back and look at the pink and the green. So what is the difference? How do we know whether we're going the pink or whether we're going the green? So if your angle is going counterclockwise, so the opposite of the direction of a clock, which would be the pink, the pink is going counterclockwise, then the angle is going to be a positive value. So this is the pink. And if the angle is going clockwise, the direction of a clock, then the angle is going to be negative. So this is how you're going to know whether you go from your initial to your terminal in the pink direction or in the green direction. So how do we measure angles? There are actually two ways of measuring angles. Most of you will have probably heard, should have heard about one way of measuring angles, which is degrees. But there is a second way of measuring angles, which is going to be really important for us as we move forward because of when we're graphing, when we're talking about real numbers, and this is radians. So we're going to be using both of these a lot. Um, after maybe the first few weeks, we're going to be using mostly radians. So you really want to try to transition yourself from understanding degrees to understanding radians. It is normal at first to feel the most comfortable, of course, with degrees because this is what you know from before. So if we make a full circle in our standard position angle, so the initial ray, you make a full circle counterclockwise, it's going to be a positive 360 degrees. It's positive because we're going counterclockwise. You can see the way that the little arrow was drawn. And it, when a full, you do a full circle, that's known as 360 degrees. So that's known as one revolution. Um, to be even more specific, it would be one counterclockwise revolution. So let's... So what that does is that it creates what is called axis angles. And axis angles are going to be the angles that fall directly on the axis. Now remember the axis is either the x-axis or the y-axis. 
So you have the positive x-axis, the negative x-axis, the positive y-axis, and the negative y-axis. So you're going to have four axis angles. So let's take a look at them. Okay, so we're going to have two different diagrams. We're going to have one where we're going counterclockwise, and we're going, going to have one where we're going clockwise. So if you have the initial ray being on the positive x-axis right here, if you don't go anywhere, that means that your angle is going to be zero degrees. So the positive x-axis is zero degrees. If you go to the positive y-axis, you have done a right angle, and that is 90 degrees. If you go in a straight line, that is 180, which is half of a circle, a semicircle, so half of 360. And if you go down to the negative y-axis, that's 270 degrees. You can also think about this, which is really going to help you when you are doing radians, and I'll repeat it later which is you're doing three right angles. So you're doing 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and 90 times three is 270. And then if you do a three circle, it's 360. So zero degrees and 360 degrees are the same, finish at the same place. So there's gonna be a special name for that, which we'll talk about later. Okay, if you go clockwise, you still start at zero degrees, but now you're gonna go the opposite direction, the direction of a clock, and your angles are going to be negative. So when you go down, this is negative 90 degrees, which again has a special relationship to 270. This is going to be negative 180, and this is going to be negative 270 degrees. And of course, if we go back to the beginning, negative 360, a full circle in the clockwise direction. So we have what is called acute right and obtuse angles, so an acute angle, so the most common way for us to denote an angle is going to be the letter theta. So theta, an acute angle means that theta, the angle, is less than 90 degrees, but greater than zero. A right angle means that the angle is 90 degrees. And an obtuse angle is that the angle is greater than 90, but less than 180. We're going to be using, at the beginning, for the most part, acute and right angles. So let's draw these. Let's draw four different angles in standard position. So that means that we need to draw where the terminal ray is. At the beginning, if it helps you, you can draw where 0 is, where 90 is, where 180 is, and where 270 is, if you're drawing in the positive direction. So if I'm drawing 45 degrees, that means that it's halfway to 90 degrees, so it's going to be directly in the middle of quadrant 1. This is 45 degrees. 150 is going to be in quadrant 2, but you got to be careful because 150 is not going to be directly in the middle of quadrant 2. 150 is closer to 180 than it is to 90, so it's going to be a little bit closer to 180. So this is 150. Now, my next two angles are negative. So again, at the beginning, if it helps, write your axis angles. So negative 60 degrees is going to be clockwise. I can see that it's going to go into quadrant 4 before negative 90, and it's closer to negative 90 than it is to 0. So it's not going to be right in the middle. So we're going to be about so exactly two-thirds of the way in. So this is negative 60. And then if I'm doing negative 225, that's going to be in the middle of negative 180 and negative 270. So that's going to put me in quadrant 2. And 225 is actually right in the middle of 180 and 270. So it's going to be right in the middle of quadrant 2. So here's negative 225. So here's a little bit of review about angles in degrees.